Hello and welcome to more The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. In the last episode, we got the fourth and final element. If we go over here, we now have all of them, including the wind element. Today is going to be the final gathering, guys. By the end of this episode, we are going to have every single heart piece, every single fusion will be done, and we will have 130 figurines. So we've got quite a lot to do. Give us some guidance, Ezlo. Link, I'm overcome. We've got all the elements now. Now we can revive this sacred blade. You'll have Princess Zelda back to normal in no time. All right, that sounds pretty fancy. So what we're going to do is get out our Ocarina of Wind, and we're going to go ahead and warp back to Hyrule Town. If we wanted to get the four sword, or the uh, fourth element fusion crud into the sword, we could go to the to Hyrule Castle, go to the Elemental Sanctuary and do that crud. The problem is after we do that, we're going to be stuck up there for a little while, so I don't want to do that quite yet. So let's go talk to this guy for now. Hyrule Castle has become nothing more than a giant nest for monsters. Those of us who are left must protect the town from these beasts, or those beasts, whatever. Now this girl right here, throughout the entire game, but with all of the dialogue changes that have happened in Hyrule Town, hers has not changed. There's an old legend that something big will happen when Hyrule's bell rings. Now we can finally make use of that. With our rock's cape, if we go under the bell and jump, oh, there we go, we go ahead and ring it, and out comes a piece of heart. So there you go, that's why her dialogue has never changed. Now that we've done that, will it finally change? I think the time has come, the time spoken of in Legends. I'm moved beyond words. Well, there you go. So with that done, let's keep moving on here. It's so lonely here now. I wonder if the monsters really are coming. I love how the music is just so over the top and happy. It's the good old Hyrule Town music, even though everyone's talking about monsters and everything being awful. I mean, I guess the world has kind of already been full of monsters, but now they're in the castle too. I don't know, man. So if we go down here, we've got a couple more people to talk to. This is definitely not the time to be looking for that dumb light force. Hey, what's up, June? There are so few people here now. I'm afraid something terrible will happen. Uh-oh. And there's a new character right here, so let's go talk to him. Let's not jump for joy. I'm a rich guy, see? And I'm a collector to boot. Uh, okay. If you ever find a complete set of figurines, you should tell me. You do know what I'm talking about, don't you? Well, get to it. All right, so we'll have to talk to him after we get all the figurines, I guess. But now that we've got the rock's cave, we can go inside the dojo and get the final tiger scroll that we're able to get from this area. So let's go talk to him. Aha, yes, you have the rock's cave and you have acquired new skill. Yes, I'm ready to train you again. So would you like to train here? I am very hesitant knowing that he's gonna probably possess me again, but oh well, we can learn the down thrust. First, equip the rock's cape. Second, equip the sword. Third, jump. Then, fourth, at your jump's peak, swing the sword. That's all, young swordsman. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it. Yes, you see it, do you not? But one must feel the technique. Oh, great. Well, we're gonna get possessed again. Now, I mentioned this is the final Tiger Scroll we can get from this guy, but this is only Tiger Scroll number seven. There is still one more to go, so we're gonna have to get that. It's just not from this dude. So equip the rock's cape and the sword, jump, and when you reach the big jump, blah, 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 do that crud. And, well, if you double jump, you actually can't do it. You have to do it out of a regular jump. And there we go, the down thrust. Yes, fine work. You know the way. I will now give you this Tiger Scroll. If you ever forget this technique, you can review it with this scroll. And the thing is, the eighth Tiger Scroll, to get that, we had to get the first seven before we could get it from the dude. So what we have to do now that we have this is go back to Caster Wilds, and we can go get the eighth Tiger Scroll. And after we get that, it means we can get the seventh and the eighth newsletters as well, which is all of them. So let's go back to the Windcrest in Caster Wilds. Let's go ahead and get out those Pegasus boots so we can easily run across. And it's right, right, right over here. I just go up this way a little bit. And there it is. It's kind of a weird place to have it, just chilling in Caster Wilds, but here we go. Though my body may perish, I am still the true master swordsman of Hyrule. Swiftblade the first, spirit of the swordsman. If you train with me, I will teach you skills that are out of this world. So, would you like to train here? Okay, as long as I don't get possessed by a ghost, I guess it's going to be all right. The great spin attack. It's not the ordinary spin attack. It's not even the good spin attack. It's the great one. First, do a spin attack. Second, press the button repeatedly. Repeatedly, repeatedly. Do you hear me? That's all, young swordsman. Do you understand? I think so. You said repeatedly enough times. Whoa, but it is not so easy. Oh, gosh dang it. We're going to get possessed by a ghost. Oh, well, spooky possession technique of training. Watch this. Possession. Yeah, go ahead. Do your worst. Getting possessed by a ghost, just another day in the life of Link. And there we go. Yeah, if we just spam B right there, it will, or whatever button you have the sword on. I usually have it on B. But uh, if you spam it, you can keep spinning for a while, which is actually really good. Finally, the spin attack is going to be a pretty good attack. And it's very good for farming stuff by chopping down grass. But there we go, guys. Tiger scroll number eight, the final one. 
but it's not the last dojo. There is still some more dojo action to go. They're just not going to give us a tiger scroll. Well, let's see where we got it. There it is. There it is, the down thrust and the great spin attack. So with those, we're going to go back to Hyrule Town, and we'll go and get the uh, final two tiger scrolls. So I'm going to get out my Ocarina of Wind, and we'll just warp right on back there. There is something I want to point out before we do this. If we go look at the map, we can see that there's that little icon on top of the post office. Whenever you do a fusion, as we've seen throughout the game, it'll put a little marking on the map, and the marking will stay there until there's nothing left to do there. So that mark will finally go away once we get all eight Tiger Scrolls. There's some other markings, though, that we still have to deal with. There's two back in the Royal Valley, because we did some fusions that unlock stuff there. And there's even one back over in Minish Woods, because we unlocked a place with a business scrub, but we we never bought anything from him, so we have to buy something to get that to go away. So for the sake of completeness, I will also be clearing out every single map icon in the entire game throughout this playthrough, so we'll get to that today. But for now, let's go back over to the post office and let's go buy, well, we've already bought uh, the seventh, tiger, uh, seventh newsletter, so it's now here. This is the Swordsman Newsletter number 7. Would you like to read it? Yes! Swordsman Newsletter number 7. For real swordsman only. You know the roll attack, right? Yeah, the one you do mid-roll. I bet Greyblade told you to attack just as you finish the roll, right? Well, actually, you can do it just as you start the roll, too. Which I have not done at all throughout this playthrough. It's very hard to time. Like he says, the timing is tricky. If you can get it down, this is a very strong technique. And it can definitely let you use the roll attack in some tight quarters. But it's very hard to do, so I have not even bothered trying to use it. Teach us, teacher. Camouflage shell shockers. These fiends festoon themselves with grass and rocks to deceive your eyes. He's talking about the beetles that hide under rocks and crud, which we've dealt with a very long time ago. It's kind of weird to have that show up in issue number seven. That should be like issue number one right there. Those short fuse ball bombs. I told you about them in issue number three, but here's another thing. Apparently, they drop bombs at a higher rate than other enemies. Yeah, not exactly that useful at this point in the game either. Swiftblade signing off. The next one is our last issue. After that, it'll be time for me to put down my pen. As much as I like writing, I'm a teacher at heart. But I know you'll miss me when I'm gone. I'm like a superstar. Or a star superstar, whatever. Alright, so we'll have to go and buy issue number 8. And then we'll go read that crud. And the icon on the map, like I said, will actually disappear. So we'll talk to her. Talk to her again. Let's go buy issue number 8. And what we're going to do is we're going to go out. We'll go back in. I'll, I'll even talk to her to see if she has any new dialogue now that we've bought everything. You now have the full collection of the Swordsman Newsletter. Hooray! All right, now all kinds of stuff, blah, blah, blah. Let's go read the final newsletter here. Yes, I would love to read it. Swordsman Newsletter number eight, The Way to the Sacred Blade. Have you ever wished you could unleash your spin attack a little faster? Or perhaps split faster? Or maybe you wanted a longer great spin attack? It's only natural to want these things. Every warrior wants to be his best. So now for some good news. I haven't confirmed it, but there may be a way. All of these things could be yours if you only figure out how to do it. Yeah, I've got the better spin attack, I've got the better uh, splitting speed, but we'll have to get that great spin attack or whatever. Teacher's Teacher, the one I... It's kind of weird. I'm not going to read all this, but they give you some weird lines. So they tell you you have to shoot the Igors with an arrow and they'll drop more arrows. Ridiculous to have that in the final issue, considering that was a long time ago that that was useful. And they'll also talk about our most fabled creations of the Minish. I hear that they drop kinstone pieces when you beat them. Although we only have a few more fusions to do, so not that big of a deal. Swiftblade signing off. That's all the news for you. If you get lonely, just come over and spar for a while. And thanks for reading. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. And now let me sign off one final time with that oh so familiar farewell. Until next time, warriors. There, there is no next time, guys. I forgot to do it, but if you talk to the dojo guy again, he'll just say, I've already taught you everything, bro. You're good, bro. All right, let's get out our Ocarina of Wind, and now I'm going to warp over to Lake Hylia. There's some stuff to collect there. We've got the Rock's Cape, which allows us to unlock quite a lot of stuff. That is <laughs> that is definitely not Lake Hylia. Whoopsie. Ah, oh, here we are, Lake Hylia. So I'm going to go down this way and go back to another dojo. We are not done with dojos for today. Well, this one we're not going to actually uh, train here, but we are going to do a fusion. So let's go ahead and do that, crud. Fuse with Wave Blade, and this will unlock something that we could have done before, but until this point, we couldn't do anything with it. So this will open up a little little spot in this waterfall over a uh, North Hyrule field, and there's going to be a dojo inside. If we went inside there before now, before the Palace of Winds, then he'd be like, I can't do crud for you, come back later, bro. But now that we're this, at this point in the game, we can train there. So, there we go. I don't think it's actually the Palace of Winds, I think it's after you get the 8th Tiger Scroll, I think that's the important part. But alright, we're done with that. So next up I want to go up this way, and we're going to go over to the Minish Portal and shrink down. There was another fusion we could have done here a long time ago, but I never bothered because, once again, we couldn't get the reward. But now we can, now that we have the Rockscape. So we'll go ahead and do some super speed swimming, dude. And go up to this spot, and in we go. So this little dude right over this way, we can go and fuse with this guy. 
I'm really hoping, guys, that this is the last episode with some fusion counter editing. This is my last chance to fail. I really hope I don't mess this up. Can you imagine if I mess up editing the 100th Kinstone fusion? Gosh dang it, man. I think that was number 97, maybe? Maybe it was 96? Oh, jeez, I don't... Whatever, just, just look at the counter. I'm sure it's fine. So, we got that fusion done. That opens up a beanstalk. Let's get back out of here. And let's go up this way. So we're gonna go back to normal size. I'll just meet you guys over there. Haha, -ha, we're normal size again. I mean, if you can call Link normal size, a lot of people call him tiny anyways. But I wanna go over this way because with the rock's cape, we can finally get this gosh dang heart piece that has been taunting us for so long. We can jump along and grab it. There we go. Now to get to this next little block of land to the top right, I find it easiest if we stand like right here and then just do a double jump and hold up. And it seems to work out pretty well. And now we can go inside this mole cave. And this is a ridiculous mole cave. There is so much to do inside here. So let's go get to it. We've got a lot of digging to do. This might be the last episode that's gonna have fast forward digging or any digging at all. I, I don't know if there's gonna be any digging in the last episode, but we'll see. So I'm gonna go ahead and dig all this crud out real quick. And there you have it. Let's go ahead and pick up our <laughs> red kin stone, which we're never going to use. And we'll go up this way here. This will bring us to this little area. We could chop down some grass if we wanted to, but let's go down here. This will lead us to a different part of the cave where we can do some more fast forward digging and find ourselves nothing. Right over here, sometimes a like like will spawn, so we gotta watch out. Yep, there he is. You gotta watch out for that, Crud. He'll steal your, steal your shield or whatever. But let's go up here. And now we've got the beanstalk. And up here, we've got some great rewards. Now, before I open this, I forgot to mention, guys, don't be dumb like me. Go and spend your mysterious shells, because we're going to be getting a lot of mysterious shells today. I like to save the figurines for the last, or for the end of the episode, but please, don't waste your figurines. If you're close to 999 like I am, go spend all that crud before you, uh, before you open these. Up here, we're going to get ourselves 200 rupees, as well as 200 mysterious shells, and we'll also get ourselves a piece of heart. Yeah, I've made the kinstone, not the kinstone, the figurine stuff way harder than it needs to be for myself because I haven't been spending my stuff very often. So I'm going to need like 3,000 uh, mysterious shells today for the way I want to do things. We'll get to that at the end of the episode, but yeah. I would highly recommend if you guys are playing along, just dump all of your mysterious shells and uh, you'll be a lot better off than I am. So we'll backtrack through here and go back inside the cave. From this spot, we're not going to dig all of this again because we've already seen there's nothing really to find. But I will go back over this way, and we'll go off to the left. And let's do some fast forward digging here. And we've revealed three chests. Let's go ahead and open them. We've got a red kinstone. Over here we've got a blue kinstone. Do we have a green kinstone right here? Nope, just more mysterious shells. So we'll go ahead and take care of these enemies. Just got some weak crud right here. Get back here. And let's do some more digging. This spot is pretty important because there will be a mysterious wall for us to fuse right here. And this is the sixth and final mysterious wall. So let's go get to it. There we go. There's one more fusion down. We're getting close, guys. We're almost at that 100. And just like all the other ones, this one will make a Goron appear. This is the sixth and final Goron. So now they can break down this last wall. It is going to be a little while until I go and visit this guy. We will do it this episode, but it's going to be a bit later in the episode. We'll go visit these guys and talk to them and see what's beyond that, that wall right there. But all right, perfect timing. They're going to go punch this crud down together. I don't know why they walk so slow. I guess Gorons are good at punch, but not so good at uh, running or whatever. So, they take some punches, down it goes, dudes. And it's going to be back in Lon Lon Ranch, of course. So, with that, let's move on. We've got some more stuff to dig. Like I said, this is a ridiculous cave. There is a lot to do inside this one. So, we'll go back up this way, and let's keep on digging. Down this way, we're going to have an exit. So, we'll go through here, and all that's going to be out here is a very, very important thing. Yet another heart piece, or piece of heart. There we go, dude. Let's go back up, and let's go back in the cave, and get some more digging underway. There we go, kind of all over the place with my digging today, but oh well, let's go get ourselves a blue kinstone piece. Come on, dude, can we get a green one? Eh, no, it's gonna be a red one. All right, now let's go back up this way, dig through this little last section here. And over this way, we get ourselves more mysterious shells. So that's it, we're finally done with this cave. Let's get back out and let's go back to Hyrule Town. And now we're in North Hyrule Field. I wanna go to the open waterfall that we got, which is right up this way. So we'll go over here, drop on down, and in we go. Got ourselves yet another dojo to do. 
So let's go up and let's just talk to him. Really cool looking dude, actually. Mastery of the sword is mastery of the soul. I am kind of like almost the best swordsman in Hyrule. Great blade. Training with me will totally change your sword skill forever and stuff. So, would you like to train here? Y yes, please. Yes, all right, I'll teach you how to prolong the duration of the great spin attack, which you have already learned. I take visualization training very seriously, I'll have you know. Now quietly close your eyes. Visualize your sword continuing to move longer than ever possible. Whoa, whoa, whoa. spinning, 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 spinning. Yeah, he says that a lot. It's very repetitive. Manu! Now, your great spin attack will last longer than before, my student. This is the truth of the sword. When you doubt another, you bring crud, commit yourself to the blade and stuff. Hooray! This is the great spin attack rotation time increasing. So with this, we can now do our charged up crud even longer. So now it lasts about, well, about that long for quite a while. It's really good, actually. So let's get out of here. And now, we're gonna go to the Royal Valley, dude. Because, well, there's some stuff there that we unlocked from fusions. I don't know why I went that way. There's some stuff there we unlocked from fusions, and I want to go collect it. And also, you guys told me about a little secret. So if we go to the little mysterious woods area, and we do a certain pattern, it will let us through to a secret area. So we're going to check that out as well. Wait, hold on. Did I forget to show you guys the better roll attack? So it is kind of hard to time, but we can do the roll attack right out the start of our crud. Uh, let me see if I can show it. Come on. Ow, oh, come on, Link. Oh, you... You, there we go. Okay, you gotta do it really fast, but you can see we can... There we go. We can do it at the start of our roll. So if you can master that, it's really good. But now let's go up inside here, and we're gonna get out the lantern just so we can see easier. But we're gonna go left, 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 up, up, up. Very easy to remember, and also it, it works, so we're gonna do that, crud. So if you talk to Dampe, he will tell you about this. I didn't know about that, but you guys let me know. So I guess we've got the power of friendship. We can make it through this together. Let's go up this way. Go up one more time, and that should do it. If we're doing all that, we get ourselves one more genie, as well as a chest containing 200 mysterious shells, which I just totally wasted. I'm going to be grinding for like two hours for mysterious shells later, so like I said, please go spend your mysterious shells before getting these, because we're going to need a lot of them for how I plan to get the rest of the figurines. So I want to go up this way, and let's go grab these last two chests. We've got one up at the top right, we've got ourselves a red kinstone, and we've got one over on the left as well. Get this guy out of here, or we'll just run past him, why not? And we got ourselves another Rinkin Stone. So we're done with that. Let's get out our Ocarina of Wind. And we're going to go back to Hyrule Town once again. You might have thought today would only be a collection episode. But no, we are going to go and get the Four Sword. We're going to go and do some of the final dungeon in the game. So let's go get to it, man. I'm going to get out my Pegasus Boots just for some faster movement. Hopefully not get hit by an Octorok. Gosh dang it. I didn't even get hit by him. I hit him. We have to sneak back through the uh, area right here. We got to get past these guards to get inside. Uh oh no, how do you, how do you see me from there? Oh my gosh. Oh, well, that's fine. We gotta get back inside if we wanna get to that elemental sanctuary. Let's wait for him to move there. And you guys have kind of already seen me do this before, so we're gonna just fast forward a bit. Oh, come on! What the heck, dude? Fine, I'll hide down this way. Take my time. And with that, we're past the guard. So let's go inside here and run past all of these ropes. We're just gonna run right on through. I don't care if I take a little bit of damage. We've got three fairies if we desperately need them. And also we're gonna be able to get healed up pretty soon. So we're inside Hyrule Castle. Let's go into the Elemental Sanctuary once again. And let's get that Four Sword. I don't know what else to call it. I mean, there's Zelda games called Four Sword Adventures and whatever, so I'm guessing it, it's okay to call this the Four Sword. Let's go up and let's put in the final element. <laughs> The power of the wind element has infused your blade. With the power of the four elements, your blade has become the four sword. There you go, it is called the four sword. Focus power in your blade and release to fire a beam. Use it to break body's curse and restore the people of Hyrule. If we charge up a spin attack, boom, we can fire a beam, just like that. And down goes that tombstone, I guess? I don't know what that was exactly. And we open up a secret door. Mm-hmm! <laughs> it seems that forging the sacred blade somehow opened the doorway. It must lead to the room that holds the secret of the light force. Link, we must go inside. All right, Ezlo. This is getting kind of spooky, but I guess, I guess we're going in. Here we go. Hmm? 
How interesting. Look at the images on the stained glass. I bet those pictures show us where the light force is hidden. A long, long time ago. When the world was on the verge of being swallowed by shadow. The tiny Picori appeared from the sky, bringing the hero of men a sword and a golden light. With wisdom and courage, the hero drove out the darkness. When peace had been restored, the people enshrined that blade with care. and the force of the golden light embodied in Hyrule's princess shone forth upon the lands. <laughs> so that's what it means. Huh? Who was that? The, the king? <laughs> As though you really are too kind. First you give me my magic cap and then you guide me here. You've been far too generous, but now I no longer have any use for you. Uh-oh. What the? It's Vadi! Oh man, I did not see that coming at all. I guess the king has been Vadi all along. He ha ha ha. At last, I finally know the location of the light force. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Link, wake up. Can't you wake up, Link? Yep, <laughs> I just, I just, I get knocked out and I just wake up by doing a front flip, dude. Vadi disguised himself as the king to search for the light force. When he learned of this place, he waited for us to reforge the blade. If that stained glass is accurate, Princess Zelda holds the light force. Vadi will do whatever it takes to steal that power from her. If he succeeds, he, we may never be able to return the princess to normal. We've wasted too much time, Link. We must stop Vadi. Yeah, guys, if it wasn't obvious enough already, Vadi is the one, or the king has been Vadi this whole time, so... Yeah, we finally know his true identity, we know his motive, and uh, we've got to try and stop him. So we're going to go down this way, and we're going to go and open up this door, because now we're going to go into Hyrule Castle, but it is not just any Hyrule Castle. So let's run back on through and get back to Hyrule Castle, and as you'll see, things are not as they were before. What? What is this? What's happened here? They've been turned to stone! All of them! The minister and the guards? Oh no, not Minister Potho, anyone but him! Everyone in the castle, all just like Princess Zelda. This could only be the work of that evil Vadi! What cruelty, Link! Well, thankfully, he was very nice and didn't turn me to stone. We must use the power of sacred th 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 to undo this evil! So what we have to do is charge up and fire that beam at these dudes, and that will break the stone. So now we just have to find Princess Zelda and we could do that to free them. Oh, oh, thank you. You're the one who returned me to normal, aren't you? I don't know how you did it, but I can't thank you enough. Listen, have you seen how strange the king has been lately? That's because it's not the king at all. It's Vadi. He's taken over the castle. One by one, he turned us all to stone. Everyone cursed by his evil magic. Then the monsters arrived, even paralyzed. I saw it all. I only pray it's not too late to undo his evil. Now let's go ahead and open up this guy as well, who's very conveniently blocking the exit. Hey, buddy. Can we talk to you? Please move. Oh, okay, we'll talk to him. Oh, thank you for restoring me. I feel so much better now. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Now go help the others. Okay, so we'll go help uh, Minister Potho here. And maybe that will let us actually continue through this dungeon here. All right. Hey, Minister Potho. Link, we need your help. Vani took our petrified princess to the roof of the castle. He must be planning something fiendish. You must stop him. All right, so after doing that, we can now move on and go into the final dungeon in the game. Dark Hyrule Castle. Whoa! Is this really Hyrule Castle? I can't believe what's happened here! Vadi's magic has grown more powerful than I'd imagined! But the King and Zelda are in danger, Link. Let's go. Well, we have a very important room right down this way, because it has a lot of goodies. Get ourselves a fairy, we can get ourselves a second fairy, get some arrows, get some bombs, lots of good stuff. And right down there we have a chest that we can't get to quite yet. So, let's move on. If we go over to the right, there's not gonna be crud over here, so don't worry about that. Let's just go to the left instead. And move on with ourselves, or move on with our lives, whatever. We'll go up here and we'll have ourselves a Spear Moblin and also a Mimic Door. But this down here is a real door, we just have to find a key for it. We've got our Sword Beam. And I should mention it, now that we've got the Four Sword, we've got another damage increase. So some enemies that took three hits to kill will now only take two. And some enemies that took two hits to kill will now only take one. So it's very, very handy. We're gonna dodge these guys. I should mention, these are a new enemy, by the way. These are called Guru Guru Bars. Basically just an environmental hazard, not that threatening. But they are new, so there you go. We don't want to fall down there. What I want to do is go up this way. 
And here we've got another new enemy. We've got ourselves a Blue Wisp. These guys are pretty much the same as a Red Wisp. If they hit you, you can't swing your sword for like 10 seconds or so. But these guys are a lot faster and harder to dodge. Still not that big of a deal. Go ahead and kill off these dudes. Got a staircase there and another fake uh, door right there. But what I want to do is get out my bombs. Hopefully this guy will move. And we can blow this crud up and go inside. Inside here, we're going to have a Minish Portal. So I want to go ahead and take that. And now, that hole that I said we didn't want to fall into, where the uh, Guru Guru Bars were, now I do want to fall inside that. So we'll go back and uh, not get hit by those guys at all. And in we go. So now that we're small, we have to dodge the spark, but it's not a big deal. If we go up here, there will be a little room we can go inside as Minish size. So we'll sneak in and see what's through this hole. Right over this way, we've got ourselves a Minish portal and a very important button. So let's get back to normal size. And let's go press it. So this will open this door, but as you can see on the right, there's also the king, the real king, not Vadi this time, who has been turned to stone. And this door is open, so we can go free him. Oh, let's see if we can do it. Let's charge up, throw that beam, and there we go. We have just freed the actual king. Hey, buddy, how's it going? Oh, Link, are you the one who broke the curse and returned me to normal? You've grown quite brave since I last saw you, I must say. But oh, how this castle has suffered while I was under Vadi's curse. If this is this all the work of one man, as King of Hyrule, I must do something about this villain. But uh, I'm old, old, and I would only hold you back. Link, you have the sacred blade now. We must rely on you. Please, you must find a way to rescue my Zelda. Take this key. You can use it to get out of the castle from the basement. All right, so there is one door we can use that on. Most of the doors were kind of fake, but there is that one real one I showed you guys. So let's go use this crud. And like he said, we can get out of the castle by doing that. So what we're going to do is make our way back to the exit, get out of the castle, and now that we've done that, or once we've done that, we can do some stuff we weren't able to do before. Let's go ahead and split and push this crud. Let's go on down. And we're gonna go all the way down to this door. Yeah, there's some fusions and some collectibles that we couldn't get until we got the Four Sword, but now that we have it, we're good. We'll go ahead and kill off these... Gosh dang it, whiz robes. I tried to use the uh, the quick roll attack right there, but didn't actually get it. Yeah, it's pretty tough to use. Let's go ahead and get those guys. And right down this way, we're going to have this uh, staircase, which is not going to lead to anything I really care about for now, so don't worry about this. This kind of stuff will be important in a minute, but let's go back up this way. And I want to go down here and kill off these guys. The chest for the dungeon map is going to be right up here. Let's go ahead and kill these dudes. Come on. Got that one. And got that one. Nice. So let's go up, get ourselves the dungeon map, and now we'll go up the stairs. But first, let's take a look. You can see there's five floors to this dungeon, but we'll do most of this dungeon in the next episode, which is the finale. For today, we are done with Dark Hyrule Castle, so we're going to go right down this way and exit. And we're going to exit this place as well. We're going to go back to Hyrule Town, so I'll just meet you guys there. Here we are, back in Hyrule Town, and now that we have the Four Sword, there is another heart piece we can get over by the school area. Kind of showed this one before, but we weren't able to get it. So what we have to do is go up this way, and we're going to flip this crud over. And we'll go inside, and let's do a little split action. Go okay, right on down, we'll take this bottom right exit. And we just have to go up here, and go all the way to the top. And up here, we can split into four. Just like that. And now we can push this guy aside, and get ourselves a whole bunch of crud. Right up here, we get ourselves a red kinstone. Get ourselves a red kinstone. And over here, we can get ourselves... A red kinstone, as well as a piece of heart. Oh man, we have two pieces. We just need two more for the entire game. So let's go ahead and get back out of here. Going back to normal. Yay! Next up, I'm going to get out my Ocarina of Wind, and we're going to warp to Minish Woods. I want to buy a kinstone from the business scrub there to get the mark off the map. But there's also a couple fusions we can do over in this place, so let's go do it. You know, we'll do the fusions first, so I'm gonna go shrink down and go inside Minish Village. There's two fusions to do inside here, which, considering there's only three fusions left in the entire game, quite a lot. Let's go ahead and get our pickets boots out, and let's run on over. So what we have to do is go all the way over this way, and really early on in the game, we found a heart piece over this way. But at this point, after going to the Palace of Winds, not Palace of Winds, after getting the Four Sword, we can finally do some fusions in here. I don't know why they make you wait this long, but they do. So we'll go ahead and do this first one. Boom. And this one will open up a little path in Vale Falls. So we'll have to go check that one out. Boom. Wow, good job finding this place. There aren't many people who visit me here. I wonder why. Hmm. Okay, let's go out, go back in, and do that second fusion. 
There we go, boom! So just one fusion left in the entire game. Unless I'm miscounting, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. There we go, we got some crud opened up in Lake Hylia, so we'll go get that in a minute as well. So we're done here, let's get back out, and I'll meet you guys over in the business scrubs hut. We'll go in there and we'll, we'll buy a kinstone just to get the marking off the map. I should mention, we got the marks done for that, we got the markings gone for the, uh, post office so we're we almost got all of them for the entire game rightio here we are so if we look at the map you can see we have the icon still on there with the little flashing arch if we go inside and buy a kinstone it'll go away you really don't need to do this i'm being ridiculously thorough with this playthrough so i'm getting rid of it but you really don't need to do this i'm gonna go ahead we'll spend the 200 rupees to get one green kinstone piece just to get rid of that icon. So now that we've done that, we can go take a look, and it is gone. So just for the sake of being ridiculously thorough, we got it. And now let's go back up to Lake Hylia and check out that hole we just opened up. So go right over to here. Thankfully, it's right next to the Windcrest, so it's not going to take any travel time. Let's go to this little crud, go inside, and this is a very, very good spot, or this is very good fusion to do. So we go inside. We're going to have some crud we need to jump over. We could use the Gustra to suck up this dust, but it really doesn't matter too much. Especially if you jump, you could just jump and not get the speed minus or whatever. So we'll go like that. I'll take a little damage, that's fine. Up we go. And guys, I am telling you, this reward is crazy. Let's go inside, and let's talk to this guy and see what we get. Hey, how'd you find me, kid? You're a real humdinger. So, since you found me, I'm gonna give you my number one treasure and keep up the good work. We get an entire heart container. This is equal to four heart pieces, and that's gonna bring us up to 19 hearts in total. We have just two more heart pieces to get, and we will have everything in the entire game. We'll have 20 hearts done. Holy crud. So let's go back to normal size, and let's go check out the Goron Cave. We have to do some crud there. And the Goron Cave is pretty nearby Lake Hylia, so I'm not even gonna do any kind of warping or anything. All I'll do is go down here, and then we jump down this way. The Goron Cave is in Lon Lon Ranch, but we have to do a little bit of back and forth to get to it. But we'll just do that. Go back this way, and yeah, we'll just roll on over. Man, for anyone who's been counting rolls throughout this entire series, it's almost over. The pain of counting rolls is almost coming to a close. Let's go inside the Goron Cave. And here we go. All six are out. Let's talk to him here. Thank goodness we're finally through. That was a long way to dig. Yeah, they've been digging for like four months or however long the series has taken to complete. Together, there's no rock we can't dig through. Okay, these rocks are delicious. I just want to stay here forever. It's nice having all my friends here, but sometimes I can't tell them apart. Wow, dude. You know, with six Gorons all here at once, it starts to smell a little ripe. Uh-oh, I got some B.O., dude. That Goron statue outside the cave is a little scary. And... Our final fusion in the entire game, number 100. Here we go, guys. Let's go use a red kinstone, fuse with this Goron, and see what happens. Soak it in, my dudes. This is it. Oh, <laughs> we got it. Oh. Oh. What a nap. Yeah, it's a, it's a little creepy, guys. But there we go, the final fusion will give us that. Hmm, they fit perfectly, so that's good. Yeah, the dude over on Vale Falls or Vale Springs, wherever he was, wakes up. Up here, we got ourselves the fourth and final bottle. Heck yeah. But we've got some crud to collect over in Vale Falls, so let's go check it out, guys. Man, we are done with fusions. Uh-huh. So we'll warp up to Vale Falls here, and I'll just show you guys the map real quick, because the big Goron that we just unlocked will show up on the map way up there. The thing is, the big Goron is kind of post-game. We can't really do anything with them right now. This game does not have that much to do as post-game, but there is a couple things, and the big Goron stuff is one of them. So even though we can go talk to him, he won't really do anything for us quite yet. We're gonna have to beat the game and come back. But we can walk under his fingers, so that's always fun. Let's walk under these fingers too. Well, let's go talk to him here. Hey, buddy. Welcome, Goro. Oh, what a tiny Goron you are. You make this big Goron happy with this unexpected visit to my distant home. And yes, if you should ever accomplish some major feat, well, then you should come back and visit me again. Don't forget. I'll try not to forget. It's okay. Goodbye, Mr. Goron. I'm going to warp back to Vale Falls again because it's a little bit closer to the actual reward I want to get here. Here we are. So we'll just climb down. We've got the mole cave we now have access to in this place. So we'll go check it out. Let's go down this way. Watch out for rock choo-choos. They're so dangerous. And we'll go down here and just swim over to the side. Let's go get out our mole mitts one more time. This should be our final mole cave for the entire game. 
So in we go. Let's go ahead and do some digging. Yeah. There we go. And up here we got ourselves another piece of heart. And we've only got one more to go. And I'll just tell you guys, to get the final piece of heart, we have to get 130 figurines. So that's going to be a big task to, to get that last one. But we'll get it. So we'll go ahead and knock down that crud. And do one more bit of fast forward digging. And what do we get over here? We get ourselves some more mysterious shells, which I've been wasting throughout this entire episode. Feels bad, but, oh uh, well. So from here on, most of this episode is gonna be dedicated to getting the last figurines that we need, and there's quite a lot to get. I've got a good strategy planned out to get them as quickly as I can, but before we do that, there's actually one more thing I wanna do, which is not in Hyrule Town, I don't know why I warped here. We're gonna go back to South Hyrule Field, and we're gonna talk to Tingle, because Tingle's been a big part of the fusions, and, well, now that we have them all, let's talk to him and see if he does anything. So we'll get through uh, this first bit of dialogue because he doesn't say anything. You fused each and every last kinstone. Way to go, Mr. Fairy. You can claim this Tingle Trophy as your own with pride now. There it is, guys. We get the Tingle Trophy. And that will actually take the spot of our kinstone crud up in this spot. So there you go. We can now still see our kinstones inside the trophy, I guess. All right, let's go get the, like, 40 figurines we need. I'm going to go dump all of my shells real quick. And then I'll show you guys how I want to farm these. For a long time, I was planning to use as few shells as possible, just do one at a time, because mathematically, one at a time is the best way to get all of the statues with the fewest kinstones possible. The problem is, I was not thinking of terms in terms of, well, time spent, and the truth is, we can just spend as many as we want and go farm more shells faster than it would be to, well, do one at a time. So. Using it the minimal amounts of shells is actually not a very good strategy. It's much better, in my opinion, to... Once you get down to, like, 20-ish percent or lower, it's better to just spend all 100, just get it done, and go farm some more, I think. And we'll, we'll get into some farming tactics in a bit, but here we got Ball and Chain Soldier. Appears in the Palace of Winds. They're not fast, but that Iron Ball is a bruiser. Try to hit them after they swing the ball. Georg Pear appears in Palace of Winds. Females are larger than males. They fly around the Palace of Winds, uh, preying on adventurers. Cloud Piranha appears in the sky. They swim through clouds like fish and water. Attack them in that brief moment when they pop out. Spiny Beetle appears in various areas. They hide under common rocks and grass. Be careful, because they can pop out when you least expect it. Spear Moblin appears in Minish Woods, etc. They rush you on sight. They also block head-on attacks with their spears, so circle around to attack. Ezlo and Link. A young boy on a quest with Ezlo to restore the Four Sword. With the sword's power, he hopes to remove the curse on Princess Zelda. Dampei, the grave digger at the cemetery. They say he has the power to speak with the dead. He fuses the kinstones he digs up with the local ghosts. Lakitu appears in the sky. They float on clouds. They don't move, but they do throw lightning bolts. Steal their clouds with the guts jar. Spookter and Spectre. Ghost from the Royal Valley. The one in the blue cap is Spookter, and the one in the red cap is Spectre. Spookter tries to be scary, but he's just not. And with that, we're down to two mysterious shells. So I want to show you guys how I'm going to be getting more of them. There's a few ways you could do this. One is you could go get some green picolite and use that to farm up mysterious shells. But the problem is, from my experience, you can spend 200 to get one of those. And when you go farm them, you're probably only going to get like 15 or 20. So what I like to do instead is to just buy them. Right up here, we could buy 30 mysterious shells for 200 rupees. And there's two ways we could farm rupees. One is we could just go in front of Link's house. We could dig that spot that gets us 20. And we could go back and forth over and over. I timed it. It takes about 40 to 45 seconds to get 200 rupees. So that is one option. Our next option is to go and use the uh, yellow pico light right here. And that's what I'm going to be doing. So we're going to use yellow pico light. We'll go up to that big grass area and we'll farm some crud up doing that. Using our new thing right here, the great spin attack, is going to let us get a lot more rupees. From my experience, in the same time it takes to get about 200 from digging, which is like 40, 45 seconds, we can get more like 300 to 400 in profit. So on top of the 200 we have to spend by doing this. And that includes like the time it takes to buy it, the time it takes to walk to the grass area. So it is a bit more effort than digging, but it is faster. So basically what I'm going to be doing is buy a Picolite, spend all the extra shells I have on Mysterious Shells, or all the extra rupees I have on Mysterious Shells, then go farm rupees until I get to about 999 or close to it, whatever. And then we'll go buy another Picolite, spend the rest of the rupees on Mysterious Shells, and we'll keep on doing that until I'm at 999 Mysterious Shells, and then we'll go buy a bunch of figurines and repeat. I think this is going to take us probably like almost two hours. It's pretty brutal, but this is kind of what we have to do. Now, if you want to just go and spend one uh, one shell at a time on figurines, you could do that, but I timed it and it takes about 30 seconds per attempt. So when you're down to those low percents where it's like 10% or lower, 
uh, I don't have any more. Um, it's going to take a long time. It's going to take several minutes of real time for one figurine. And in that same time, we could easily farm 100 mysterious shells and just go buy it. Guaranteed chance. So this way, in my opinion, is way superior. So we've got our yellow picolite. I'll meet you guys in the grass area. And I'll show you how I'm going to farm these rupees up. And by the way, you will not have to farm nearly as much, nowhere near as much, if you're actually spending your Mysterious Shells as you go throughout the playthrough. Instead of doing what I've been doing and just having so many wasted by already having 999 when I find them, it's been a little bit weird because I'm doing the Let's Play and I, you know, don't want to go out of my way to get figurines too often in the videos, but if you ever play this game, please just go spend your Mysterious Shells and don't waste as many as I wasted. So let's go up here, let's clear out all the enemies, and now let's reset the grass by going inside an area and coming back out. And what I'm going to do is stand in the bottom right area down here. So let's go get out our Pico Light. I'll stand in this exact spot, get that Pico Light out, drink it, and immediately start charging. There we go. Oh, I goofed it, dude, I goofed it. You have to actually spam the B button. But as you can see, we'll get a ton of rupees. Kind of goofed it right there. Let's charge up a new one, just like that. And as you can see, we get a ton of rupees before the sparkles run out. So there we go. Let's go pick these up before they vanish. And just like that, we're back up to almost 700 rupees. So we'll go buy another Pico Light, get another round, and we should be maxed out on rupees again. Yeah, it's pretty quick. So I'll just do this and buy Mysterious Shells, and I'll meet you guys when my Mysterious Shells are maxed back out. We'll go buy more figurines. Alrighty, I'm back up to 999 Mysterious Shells, and that didn't take as long as I was expecting. That took me, I think, less than half an hour, so... I don't think I'll have to do that more than three times. So aside from the actual getting figurines part, I'm pretty sure the farming will be less than an hour and a half, which is still a lot, but not as bad as I was expecting. Let's go ahead and dump a bunch of crud in here and get ourselves some figurines. Spark appears in dungeons. They cling to walls and move quickly. Normal attacks may not work, but the boomerang is pretty effective. Ooh, big Goron. This is a legendary Goron with a body bigger than a mountain. This Goron is so big, in fact, that no one has ever seen all of it at once. Big Blue Choo Choo appears in the Temple of Droplets. An ordinary Blue Choo Choo. Fighting him while minish size is daunting, but just try to avoid that electric attack. Town Picori. These minish like humans so much that they move from Minish Village into Hyrule itself. They try to make humans happy, but it sometimes backfires. The Blade Brothers. All of these self-trained swordsmen have won the fighting tournament at the Picori Festival before. They see great potential in Link. <laughs> Look at that dude's face. Capless Link. This is figurine number one. A young boy who lives in Hyrule. He is close friends with Princess Zelda. Mountain Picori. These seven students followed Milari from Minish Village to Mount Krennel. Their song is actually a sign that they are full-fledged Mountain Minish now. As Low Cap, a strange creature that looks at first like a cap, he speaks roughly and treats like Link like a child, but he actually really likes Link. Okay. Princess Zelda, a bright and cheery princess from Hyrule's royal family. She loves to sneak out of the castle to visit her good friend Link. Golden Tektite appears in, well, we're not sure, the legendary Golden Tektite. Its basic attack is the same, but it has much more power. And that's all I can really afford for now, so we're gonna go farm some more Mysterious Shells. I'm not quite back up to 999 Mysterious Shells, but 989, close enough. So let's go get some more figurines. Fire Wiz Robe appears in the Palace of Winds. They wield fire magic, hit them when they appear so they don't cast another spell. The Wind Tribe, the people who built the Wind Ruins. They now live above the clouds, suspended by their own magic ability to control the wind. Minister Potho, the supporting pillar of Hyrule. He is also in charge of Princess Zelda's education, so when she goes missing, he gets frustrated. Tingle's siblings? Tingle in green, and his twin younger brother Ankle in purple, and Knuckle in blue. They believe fusing kinstones will help them meet fairies, so they are recording kinstone data on their maps. David Jr. is not technically a relative. Scissors Beetle, appears in Minish Roads and Dungeons. These monsters have sharp mandibles. Hit them when they shoot these away. Avoid their attacks to get in close. Ice Whiz Robe appears in the Palace of Winds. They wield ice magic. They're weak against fire, so attack with fire for a quick battle. Keaton appears in various areas. This thieving fox preys upon travelers and merchants. He may not be strong, but he will attack very quickly, so be careful. Gibdo appears in the Palace of Winds. These mummies keep coming at you when you attack. It's better to fight from a distance if you want to avoid damage. Dark Nut appears in Castor Wilds. These armor-clad soldiers are tough, use your shield and rolling skills to find an opening in their defenses. I think for the nameplates for these guys, I did Dark Nut as one word. I think in some Zelda games it's one word, but I guess technically in this game it is two words, so whoops. Red Dark Nut appears in the Palace of Winds. These Dark Nut commanders are strong, but if you relax and wait for your opening, you can still defeat them. And once again, we're down to exactly zero Mysterious Shells. Holy crud. And I just counted, we only have nine figurines to get, so one more inventory full of Mysterious Shells will do the trick. So let me just go farm some more. And there it is. 
is 993 mysterious shells, which should be more than enough. So let's go get those last few figurines that we need. Karlov, a sculptor of finely crafted figurines. Many consider him the best sculptor in all of Hyrule. He enjoys collecting mysterious shells. Rock Choo Choo appears in Veil vale Falls. These tough Choo Choo's wear rocks on their heads. The rocks protect them from damage, so you'll have to find a way to knock the rocks off before you'll be able to destroy them. Wisp appears in dungeons. They float in midair. They won't hurt you, but if you touch them, you won't be able to use your sword for a while. P Hat appears on Mount Crenel, etc. These strange beasts hover on propeller-like leaves. You can pull them out of the sky with your gust jar. Wall Master appears in dungeons. If these guys grab you, they'll send you back to the start of the dungeon. Dodge them as they fall, then attack. Oh man, we're at 1% probability, so we do have to use 100 mysterious shells to actually get this crud. All right, let's go for it. This is either the last or the second to last figurine. What do we got? Bomberosa appears in dungeons. They float in the air and explode when touched. Walk carefully and you may escape unhurt. I think this is the last one. Here we go. I'm gonna go all the way up to 100 and let's get that crud. Bring it on, our final figurine, 130. Let's see what we got here. And it is the golden rope appears in, well, we're not sure, the legendary golden rope. It's much more aggressive than the normal ones. It will attack you on sight. Does, do we get any special dialogue? Oh, he fell over, dude. Uh oh, congratulations. You've now collected all of the figurines that I've made. I'll keep a good eye on all of your figures in the case. Please come see them anytime. Oh, baby. Let's go talk to him. Ah, thanks for coming. You seem to have won all the figurines I've made so far. Would you like to drive for one anyways? Uh, no thanks. So there it is, guys. We've got all 130, except there are actually are a few more in post game there's going to be like six more in post game so we're not completely done but for now we've done as much as we possibly can so we'll get the last six in the next episode after we've beaten the game but yeah guys there it is now i know i said we had like nine left and then i probably didn't show nine there was a couple that we've already gotten in previous episodes that i forgot to save after so i cut those out but anyways guys that's all of it so let's go out and talk to that guy that said to talk to him after we got all that crud hey buddy huh? Whoa! You did it! I can't believe you did it. This is a totally complete set. How incredibly awesome. And you even got the legendary Karlov medal. It shines with a beautiful light. It's every collector's dream. What have you shown me here? It's just, it's just amazing. Here, feel free to go in my house and take whatever you want and thanks. Cause you know, I'm, I'm rich. <laughs> the Karlov medal, what are you talking about, dude? I don't know, man. I'm sure he's just speaking nonsense. But now we can go inside this one building finally from this side. So, in we go. And now we can get the final heart piece, or piece of heart, in the entire game. There it is, man! We completed a new heart, and that'll bring us up to 20 in total. We did it. We're also gonna get ourselves 200, 400, 600 rupees. We also have this little thing. Let's check it. It's a phonograph, and it looks like it works. Care to try it out? Sure. And here we basically have a sound test. We could listen to different songs. So, it's kind of spooky. Let's check out track number 15, how about that? Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one right there. So yeah, you can just go through, you can listen to all the different tracks. Let's see how many there are. There's 28 tracks, and uh, that is your big reward for getting all the figurines. So there you go, guys. That is it. And with that, guys, collection for The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap is pretty much over, except for a couple post-game things, like I mentioned. So we're going to go ahead and wrap things up here for today. I know this was a long one, but we will come back next time. It will be the finale of The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. I'll see you guys then. Take care!